Hello, folks. That's a reference to a different podcast. If you know that, leave it in the comments, and I'm not going to give you anything, but uh, that's one. Of, that's a fun podcast to listen to. I don't know what to call you guys, dude. Nerds, dudes, gentlemen. It's 99% male, according to uh, YouTube analytics. But welcome to another episode of Canode Knows, brought to you by Dig BMX. This week on the show, we got Casey Badger. Casey Badger is not just an Arizona legend, he's kind of a legend in his own right and BMX in general. I'd say he has probably the best X-Ups I've ever seen because they're fully corked. Oh hey, there's him right there. He came over and we chatted for a couple hours about his journey in BMX, his current life, his work that he does outside of BMX in the production field, which is super interesting. And he's just a chill ass fun dude. I have known him for, you know, over a decade, but never really sat down and talked to him like this. So I, I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy it too. Shout out to Casey for coming over, making this happen. And it got cut a little bit short because we uh, were late for a uh, local video contest, which was super fun. Shout out to Zach Beerley for putting that on for the Phoenix scene. Before we get into it, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. Uh, let's help Diggs youtube channel grow and mine too it, i don't care which one you watch it on but maybe uh go and support both of our channels and leave a review that is helpful big time and getting a uh, organic reach out there for people to listen to the show if you want to uh, get your health right i got a promo code for rar superfoods which is a green uh superfood it's a powder that you drink um if you've heard of athletic greens it's very similar to that, but it's owned by John Mata and Joey Mata. So support small businesses and go use the promo code Canode at checkout for 15% off. And I think just adding that into your daily life honestly helps get the ball rolling on getting a lot healthier. So there's that. And yeah, big ups to Casey, big ups to Dig. And without further ado, let's just get into it, man. Casey Badger. <laughs> Oh, hello, Casey Badger. Hi, get your get your mic over there, dude. Talk, talk into that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could just do the whole thing from right here. Well, um, hi, Casey. Hi, Bobby. Why are you in town? Why are you in Phoenix? You live in Oregon now. Uh, yeah, I come back for one of my best friend's weddings. It's on Sunday. Hell yeah. Um, I think I know that best friend. Mm -hmm. I Big like Andy. Him. Big Andy, dude. Love the, Andy. The fucking man. I don't think I've ever met his... Uh, fiance or wife on sunday oh yeah her name is also casey casey mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's your fun it's huh? funny so andy officiated my wedding no shit he called me quesadilla in the wedding <laughs> in the wedding because he was so fucking nervous yeah <laughs> and so billy and i last night painted a thing that's like you put you know like the tourist things where you put your head through a different image yeah and he yeah. was like i want a skinny cowboy holding a fat girl right yeah and so i put on it like andy plus casey forever and forever. i was like i should put quesadilla on there instead of casey and i was yeah. like i can't do that to her though like it's not her fault True. Andy. Yeah. <laughs> andy ruined my wedding i'll get him back <laughs> right. i've been scheming this for four years <laughs> oh people shit. don't people don't forget <laughs> never forget <laughs> um we were talking before we hit record about a project that brought you down here uh, that um that happened before this wedding stuff and it was super interesting so i kind of want to get into that again so uh tell me about the uh what what company did you say it was red bull no it wasn't a red bull it was a i don't know if i can say the okay. name it's a secret it's a mountain bike wheel company okay I would say. um yeah i just basically like i do work for a production company called modify content which we did red bull dreamline we did tyler finagle silverdome project we did snowmobile events and do so some dope. mountain bike stuff like a, you know cool red bull projects plus you know some other stuff and you know the other things that pay the bills like a golf brand and nike dope. like yeah. everybody else in portland and yeah we do we do a lot and we try to do the fun stuff the fun stuff is like you know what gets us excited i guess yeah. um but i have a photographer friend in portland who's comes from skateboarding he's john humphreys who you know he's literally the fucking man in the skateboard photography world he got hired on this job and basically he like reached out to them and was like hey you need to just hire casey like he comes from this world he can like really help direct this 
you know, fill in the blanks because you guys don't have any backing in this and, and you know, you don't really know how to fulfill this job. And so they kind of hired me on as like, you know, help produce it slash be like, I think my title was t- was technically like course designer, which is kind of hmm. hilarious because I, yeah. <laughs> I don't design the course. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I mean, just knowing that world and knowing bikes and, and I got Aaron Bostrom hired on to like actually do the building. He would actually be the course designer, you know, like yeah. I would just... I know how to speak the language between the creative director for the agency, all the producers, the client side. And then obviously I can relate to the athletes yep. and I know I can look at what they're trying to do and like kind of help the athlete, like yeah. come up with what they want to ride. Um, so yeah, that was, we did that. The story was pretty funny on the first site check. So one of the athletes is Mitch Ropalato. He's a, Ropalato. Ropalato. Mitch Ropo. He's he's a pretty entertaining mountain bike dude. Okay. As much as that pains me to say. No, <laughs> we hate mountain bikes, really especially come, on really this podcast. Around on the mountain bikes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but he's fucking awesome, and he's like, uh, you could tell he like rode BMX, basically. You know, like you can look at a mountain bike and go, oh yeah, you didn't just ride mountain bikes, yeah, right? Um, but yeah, we're out doing the site check and it's at this like abandoned airplane graveyard basically or not abandoned but it's just like a it's like oh i was laughing that it was like pick and pull but for airplane parts like it's literally just junkyard but it's all giant airplanes legitimately is it like a pick and pull for airplanes yeah i think they do like a lot of hollywood set stuff oh, like okay, he was saying you, like yeah. con air was filmed out there and like some b yeah. movies and shit you know like Excuse me. So there's one of those playing graveyards here, but also you were talking about this yeah, one was I, this one was in the Mojave Desert, so okay. kind of like behind Riverside almost. Um, but yeah, we're doing the site check, and Mitch was like very like he didn't know us at all, you know, like he'd never met any of us, and he's with like his basically team manager or like he's the director of marketing for that company, but and we're all like maybe you can do this or maybe you can do this. And, you know, and I'm wearing a kink shirt and I had like an Odyssey beanie on and he's like, oh, you ride BMX? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I ride BMX. And he's like, oh, that's cool. Like I used to ride BMX. I'm like, yeah, I could, I could tell by, I, yeah. like, you know, I did my homework. I watched you, I watched your videos, you know, like yeah. you, you look good on a mountain bike. And we're going and he's like, he's kind of like, you know, you can see him like kind of putting pieces together as we're like talking about stuff. And he's like, where do you live? And I'm like, oh, I live in Portland now, but I'm from Phoenix. And he's like, oh uh, a kink dude just moved from phoenix to portland like not too long ago like maybe like a couple years ago he's like i think it was sexton i was like no nah, sexton <laughs> lives in like dallas now uh and he's like and he's like no no no, it wasn't sexton it was um and i look over and humphreys is like holding back this laugh you know he's like because <laughs> he knows what it's coming and he's like it was casey badger and i was like i'm casey and then like instantly from that he's like holy shit like we Hell did a, yeah. we did a kink trip to salt lake years ago you know and he's like i watched you and doyle like walk through the park like into layton and he's like i was like a 13 year old bmx kid you know like so he's like i just looked around and i found like the biggest thing that i knew how to do and he's like he threed this crazy gap at layton which is like it's hard to even jump this thing and he threed it and he was this little kid and i'm like i fully remember that like hell yeah and i was like that was you and he's like yeah but that alone like from that minute on he was like it like gained his trust in that like we knew what he could do and wanted to do and it like helped the whole shoot out you know like that's dope could speak the language and can you share like what kind of because like, i'm picturing mountain bikes at a airplane graveyard and i'm not sure i mean honestly it was you know this shoot was mountain biking but you know to shad johnson's argument like bmx is in a size is in a wheel size like it was a bmx shoot at an airplane graveyard Sick, like we yeah. built a, a big hip like he wall rode the side of a giant plane Dope. that's what i was and asking like, like yeah what, he did what like kind of shit? Yeah. another big hip that he jumped over like basically like these stacks of planes that were stacked up yeah and jill kittner who is paul kittner for everybody that you know remembers him from building the underground and old snm dude pacific northwest but jill kittner's his sister she's not even arguably the best female cyclist i would even put her at any level like she's like 12 time world champ no shit like queen of crankworks like five times like she's a boss you know but she was in it she was in that too and so we are like finding setups like there was a whole 
like 747 that was like on its side and so she like rode down the wing like nice. the whole wing it was super steep and she's like a cool step down like off of the nose of an airplane that's like, dope yeah it was super fun like and it was you know very produced you know like yeah had a whole grip team and lights and, yeah you know like there's somebody like, hitting was... a slate for every shot <laughs> well no slate <laughs> like motion kind of wrapped around the you know it was like still emphasis with you know motion was their, their deliverables were very small but yeah. still like i mean you know that world like it's hard to put them both in the same space mm -hmm. especially at night like lighting is so different yeah but i mean they figured it out like that's dope. from what i saw it all looked good we are kind of we didn't get to watch all of the filming or writing we were kind of like building ahead of what they were going to be doing or moving shit around yeah but yeah, I mean, that but project, you got it done. Sounds like you were the uh, producing translator. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, BMX. Uh, blending the world. Yeah. yeah. It's wild how like, you know, it's not like they're out of touch. They're just kind of ignorant to, I guess, the culture is, is a weird way to like phrase it. Corporate creative people and then, you know, bridging the gap to someone who just rides bikes and has been doing that forever yeah like Ropo. i mean it's crazy obviously like we we are hypersensitive to any of that stuff because this is our life you yeah. know like and i and i mean that when i say life like all of us i feel like to a better part like this is what we live for right, right. so like anything that doesn't represent us in the best possible light instantly gets clowned yeah so you know to a creative director that comes from this big agency like bmx is the smallest weirdest world like why why he doesn't need to care about it at all yeah like he did for the shoot but yeah. that's what he hires people like us for you yeah. know like luckily there are people like us that are infiltrated into these worlds you know like mm -hmm. that's dope let's talk about infiltrating into that world well <laughs> like i do basically you're you're casey badger and you wrote for kink for a long time i would imagine anybody listening already kind of knows who you are but let's talk about the, your transition from being a pro rider to your next job like what how did you get out of it and what was your like first step and in, in in infiltrating the uh the, you know production corporate uh basically things that pay money type of work <clears throat> i mean i'll say i still don't really make money because i still <laughs> just do the things that i I'm like fishing, baby. <laughs> yeah, fishing. Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, the fishing thing is interesting because I fished when I was a kid with my dad a lot. My dad passed away when I was 18. I completely quit fishing. And then, you know, I was like 30 or maybe a little bit before that, like 28 or something. And I went on a camping trip, started fish, like went to my mom's, got all my fishing stuff and was like, why the fuck did I stop doing this? And yeah. then like literally like it, it's like bike riding to a, 13 year old right like it just takes over your life so yeah. it's like any moment i could i'd be going fishing or i'd be reading about fishing i'd be like learning how to tie flies again and it was it was a weird combination of like sentimental stuff from my childhood yeah. plus like you know my passion shifting out of bikes which i didn't think that anything could ever shift out of bikes you know fully and all of that like encompassed into this weird world that i thought was completely different from bikes but it's not like it's literally basically the same thing with a different medium so to speak right um but yeah i just started doing that a lot and like that kind of like bikes did for me just naturally progressed into me like getting sponsored by a fishing company and like Which going so on dope. trips yeah. and like it was it was a very natural like i didn't try for that to happen i didn't yeah. try for anything in bikes to happen i mean maybe to my fault it was just everything was just very natural and organic for how my life has worked out you know like not saying that i didn't like try is a weird word but like i did, i wasn't like that wasn't my goal for anything right yeah right? i'm like, gonna become a sponsored fisher yeah exactly fisherman. <laughs> like I, when i was a kid like of course every kid's like i want to be a sponsored bike rider but yeah. like at the end of the day like sponsored or not i was gonna be doing it anyways yeah you know like but yeah the fishing stuff kind of took off and then you know with that like i started getting the work through modify which was, at the time was become co um like i helped him do dreamline builds that's so sick and kind of like learned a little bit of that like paul williams who's actually from phoenix too like he's one of my best friends and he owns the company and he kind of like you know he's like you have all these weird skill sets like you you're really valuable to us in a lot of this stuff like because i have an art background so i kind of help with like the creative concepting stuff like so i storyboard dope. out all the shoots and yeah you know like and, and again like with with a lot of this stuff like 
I have a weird knowledge and skill set that applies to this stuff. Like we do some fishing shoots and we do bike shoots and you know, Paul rides bikes and yeah, we can kind of speak on all that stuff. I haven't but seen it is Paul like in a, so long, yeah, dude. I love that guy. Too. Yeah. That's got a, dope. got a little baby now. Um, Oh, well congrats, Paul. If you're listening, <laughs> that's awesome. But yeah, it's, it was really cool. Like, and he was basically after that, like I was working at pasty here in town, like managing the Tempe store. I you remember know, this. Okay. And yeah. then doing that stuff plus fishing all the time, plus still riding, you know, like doing a lot. And then Paul's like, you need to move to Portland. Like, I think we have enough work at this point, like where you could just move here and just work for us full time. And I was nice. Like, you know, I'd already been, I'd started going to Portland for the summers and I was 21 until I was like, 27 because sure would sure moved out there yeah and he was like the first summer he's like do you have to come to portland i'm like all right Hell see yeah. you next week <laughs> <Sick>. <laughs> so i always like always looking for a way back basically you know like i love phoenix and i love arizona but i couldn't deal with summers dude uh, you, you, you had know? it made i mean you were doing the right thing being a snowbird S- sunbird i was yeah. called sunbird sunbird i like that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was, it was interesting and then you know like the fishing stuff is interesting too because I basically got on officially with the fishing stuff because of my knowledge that I gained from bike riding. Yeah, you know, I, like, I was going to ask it while you were talking about that. Like, how how does one become a sponsored fisherman? What's the terminology? I Did you see a clip of uh, the, the guy, um, or sorry, not guy, the, they, Sam Smith, who did the performance at whatever Grammys. I saw a clip of them saying i want to be a fisher them and i was like whoa a fisher them okay so nice, progressive. what is the what's the proper terminology for being a fish catcher uh, angler. <laughs> angler angler okay is the Dope. gender neutral everything that's encompassing. perfect uh, yeah. yeah um my story is in kind of weird like i was just going fishing all the time and because of how our lives worked as bike riders you know, you put everything that you're doing on the internet. Yeah. So I had a Twitter and a fucking Instagram and just, you know, and I was just like, so if, if I was fishing, I was posting fishing shit. If I was riding, I was put like not any different than what I do now. Right. right? Yeah. So I was working at my friend's clothing store at the time as well. Sunset clothing exchange. Shout out angel. Shout uh, out angel. But yeah, I was pretty slow and I got a weird Twitter message. Like, Hey, I got a fishing question. And I was like, mm. cause I would get like, and it sounds bad too, but I would get like, you know, in between BMX kids, like asking me for free bike parts, Yeah, I would get like, you know, random fishing questions too. And I would usually always field the fishing ones. Oh yeah. Be closer. I always field the fishing ones just being that it was, you know, something that I was obsessed with at the time. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, what's your question? And he's like, Hey, I'm a photographer. These are my clients. Like I have a fly fishing shoot coming up. He's like, I saw your post and you don't look like a fly fisherman. So do you want to do this shoot? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know so he's like yeah we'll fly you to oregon we'll float down this river for four days and you know we'll pay you whatever you know Fuck small yeah. small day rate yeah like, Dude, this is crazy i'm getting paid to go fishing yeah. <laughs> thought that that was it you know and then it was for a year and then a year later i get a call from or an email from the brand manager of the brand reddington who i'm still involved with and they were like hey we're we made new products do you want to come do the same thing again on a different river and i was like yes yes please and so during that you know having conversations and the brand director at the time was like you know how did your shit with bmx work like you know basically like tell me how your sponsorship in bmx worked and i was like well you know like you start and you get some free stuff and then it progressed and we got like a little travel budget and then it progressed and we got like a little salary and then you get a signature part and it, you know, like yep. your responsibilities kind of go up and I was like, I'm old. So we had print mags still. So we'd get photo contingencies or video contingencies. I remember photo you know, contingencies. Like, yeah. We'd get, you know, you get a logo and you get a couple hundred bucks or a burrito depending on who the person was. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so I explained all that to her and, you know, having, bars in a frame and how involved you know zach and kink and matt and jay and everybody let us be with those products like yeah. really taught us you know i say us too like daryl doyle everybody you know that had a part is like you learn really learn how it goes from the design phase all the way through production that's to marketing amazing. and to all that stuff and you know so we we really did get a crash course in like marketing 101 basically. shout out jay you know, for that like, yeah. that's awesome and so going through that process and she's just like you know and and i don't think we give ourselves enough credit as you know bmx riders or you know as an industry either like 
BMX industry is very progressive in its marketing because it's so, it has to be grassroots. You know, yeah. like there's no money. You learn how to do everything on this crazy budget. Yeah. You're really asking a lot out of, you know, your employees or your team members or whatever to get all of this done for literally nothing. You yeah. Know? And it's not, and it's not because there's a ton of money in the industry. It's, I mean, that's just how it is. Like you have to learn how to get all of this shit done with very little. Yeah, for real. Send a whole team of six people, film a video, yeah. get all the photos for the, you know, the uh, catalog mm -hmm. for the year, all within seven days and keep it under five grand. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you're like, and, but as a, as a 18 year old bike rider, you're like, Stoked. you're like, I'll yeah. do that for four bucks. Yeah, like, for real. <laughs> sometimes that's your per diem. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know? totally. For the whole trip. Yeah. And that's great, you know, but things progress and you, you tend to need a little bit more as you get older and yeah. you, you know your worth. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're talking to this Reddington yeah, girl. Yeah. And they're just, she's just like, how do you know all this shit about marketing? Like you should be a marketing director, brand manager or something, you know? And I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I just paid attention, I guess. Yeah. You know? Like, and then ultimately she's like, well, all of that stuff that you did for the bike company, like, do you want to just do that for us? Like, smart girl yeah yeah <laughs> you know like and she's like cool i'll give you free product <laughs> we'll go on a trip or now and then you know like sick so then you're a sponsored angler. and so then i'm a sponsored angler and that that's fire yeah has that progressed any further since then or like is there were you flow and then now are you pro mm. in your f angler career angling <laughs> it's weird so the the outdoor world is it is different like the, the only way that i can explain it is like bike riding there's like a it's it is hard especially for me saying this too like you have to be like you can you need to be certain good you know like yeah. you need to be at a level right whereas like in fishing like you can be the best caster on the planet it's all it's not up to you though it's up to the fish ultimately right like you're fooling something else that's living yeah into eating and that's and that's what is deciding your success that's or if, and if that's what your success is like fly fishing is a weird thing too like to me catching the fish isn't really that high up on the totem pole of what makes a successful day for fishing for me right okay but from a brand standpoint like why do you hire this person or like you know like yeah how do you promote this person like and it's everything aside from catching fish, right? Yeah. And it's a lot like that in bikes too. Like yeah. we, we kind of have this conversation. Like, I mean, obviously I wasn't the best bike rider, you know, like, yeah. but I, I made a little niche in my world, you know, and, and yeah. did what I did. And, and it was, had very little to do with bike ability. Yeah. I, I think. I think it's like personality, willingness to, you know, do photos and videos. And I don't know the whole, the whole package more yeah, than just, just being able know, to catch a yeah, fish. You want to be able to. Or being able a, to tell yeah, it. Like you know? go on a fishing trip and get along with everybody. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. Same with bike trip. Like For real, it's huge. Don't butt heads. And, but yeah, it's interesting. So they're just like, yeah, I don't, we, there's no way to like do that. I mean, there are like big figureheads in the fishing world that I'm sure get paid. Yeah. I'm not sure. They do get paid. My yeah. wife gets money. Um, she's a pro. Yeah, she's a pro. I'm just like. That's dope. You married a pro angler. Anglet? Pro, pro, uh, no, still <laughs> I'm angler. just kidding. Yeah, I'm angler. I don't know. But yeah, it's it's a little bit different of a of a model, but it's ultimately kind of the same. Like when it boils down to it, that's fine. So still Reddington. Any other? Yeah, still Reddington. Um, like what <laughs> does Reddington do? I'm just curious personally because fishing's a whole different. Can you tell I've never been fishing? <laughs> I don't know shit. <laughs> go fishing, Bobby. Um. Yeah, let's go fishing. Uh. Yeah. So I want to know, like. I don't know what, like in BMX, there's parts yeah. sponsors, there's frame sponsors. No, perfect. So Reddington makes hard goods. So rods, reels. Okay. They make waders, which keeps you dry. Yeah. They make boots. So that's what Reddington's main thing is. Dope. Reddington is under a parent company called Farbank. Okay. So think about it like full factory. Yeah. Odyssey Sunday. You know, yeah. Fair deal. So Farbank owns another rod hard goods company called Sage, which is like top of the line. Okay. Best stuff, yeah. you know. That's even better. S and M, American made. Sage, American made. Dope. Fit, overseas made. Reddington, overseas made. Okay, you know, got you. Easy, yeah. easy connection. Um, Farbank also owns Rio Products, which is they make lines. Soft goods. No, no what, what's the like category? The, it's yeah, like the, the wire. Line, the, yeah, the yeah. line that you cast. Yeah, and you fish with. They make leader and tippet, which is the monofilament, the clear stuff. Okay. They make flies. 
which is the lower, colorful thing the colorful thing yeah. made out of feathers and yeah. plastic sometimes um so they kind of have all of that stuff so i'm on rio and i'm on reddington sick i have a clothing sponsor called topo designs which is out of cal or colorado um nice yeah it's how kind did, of all the same i mean kind of like most things in life a lot of this a lot of shit comes you know from referrals and you get one thing and then it leads to another thing like i'm curious like this uh clothing sponsor you just said i forgot the roto would you say what it is topo topo it's all uh it's just like everything else in the world it's you meet people and they go Damn, i like you or i hate you you know yeah, like, for real and <laughs> someone there you know we had a, i had a friend brandon that worked there he came from Reddington and he sent me like a backpack forever ago. You know, like they make, they started out as basically just making packs. Yeah. And so I had a backpack forever and then I ended up meeting the marketing guy and the marketing guy was like, I'll give you anything else you want. And then Kayla and I both met one of the owners named Jed and he, like we got along super well. And so like it just evolved that way. It works you know? out. Like, yeah. And I, and I think like good relationships or friend relationships, right? Like yep. your business side of that will you know, sometimes business and money can ruin the friend mm -hmm. stuff, obviously. But like, if you're if you can't be friends, then why do you want to work for them? Or like, for real? you don't like the product, you don't like the bike, like then don't ride for the bike company. You yeah. know, like it's very simple. I think I don't yeah. know, but well, sometimes it's not. I guess that leads me into bike companies. Um, <laughs> I remember, dude, you were. I, I just told you this, but I'll repeat it. You were at Goodyear Skate Park, and I was 18 years old. This is like 2008, and uh, I remember shitting my pants inside because, like, I, I think I even like said, Are you, like, all right, I, I might have whispered it. That's Casey Badger, and you were you were on your signature kink bike. It was like a copper copper bike, and just freaking out, like, oh my god, it's a pro, you know. And I'm in my you know super youthful phase of riding and geeking out and thinking you know pro riders are just like oh you know like idols um at that point i guess in two, 2008 that's when i started to learn about bmx but you had already been in the game for a while and like photo contingencies like you said and i was looking earlier like you've been in videos since you know 2000s at the latest like what was a uh, what was your first fucking hey let's go back to the <laughs> beginning dude um how did you make a name for yourself in bmx um <laughs> <laughs> shit how you start that one i mean in in the i started racing when i was a kid i was eight okay that I explains went, a lot like, racing yeah racing you know i did the stereotypical story of like i rented rad from blockbuster and watched it and i went to my dad and i was like i want to do this and then you know a couple weeks later like luckily we lived here so there was racetracks like, yeah with chandler bmx a couple weeks later started racing you know and then you know fast eight years old board yeah so eight years and i and i you know i didn't race a lot when i was young like i raced a lot when i was 12 to 14 probably okay but everybody from my you know this from my age group i sound like the old asshole i'm 40 but like I, pretty much everybody i know that's in my age group like we all raced or went to the racetrack yeah you know like that was like the hub for the phoenix community is like even like brian val who didn't race that lived out here like i would still see him at the racetrack you know like yeah. it was just bikes everybody just rode bikes yep it wasn't like i'm a street rider i'm a dirt jumper i'm a flatlander like right, you just yeah. rode bmx bikes and so yeah. you went to where everybody else was and so I got to see like the other side of the sport from the racetrack, you know, like that's where I met all the UHL dudes. Like what's that, UHL Union Hills. So I was the trails oh, on okay. yeah, Union yeah. Hills. So I was like fatty Patty, schmove, Ron Huber, you know, like the core You're giving group me the like, education. I've never heard these names. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's like road fools. One, they went and rode at Beardsley, but that's all those same dudes. It's all Sick. the UHL dudes. Um, fatty Patty. Fatty Patty. <laughs> that's Shmoof, a dope name. Eight, eight O's, I think. He got an O every time he Shmoof. Was, did something cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ron Huber. And, you know, they their backstory was like they went on a trip to Indiana, rode some trails in Indiana. And before this, like, trails were like a dirt jump out in a field, and then you would, like, crank your ass off and maybe hit another one. Right. They went to Indiana and rode some trails that were like, it was like, Stu Johnson and Crandall and all those dudes had a set of trails and they rode those trails and they were like, you know, an eight pack. So it was like jump, jump, yeah, jump. flow. No, yeah, exactly. No pedaling in between. And they came home and they built a line at Union Hills, which Sick. is like a little desert lot behind a grocery store. Like, yeah. It was like in shambles when I came of age around like 2008. Like 
there was remnants of little jumps oh really there. yeah i was trying to I, think of cause... when they were because they got plowed and then they moved down the street to beardsley <laughs> which is now an apartment complex but beardsley is what was in road fools one i gotta watch road fools one road fools one still like i remember like knowing that they were coming in town i was like a junior in high school yeah and they were going to the trails and i was like fuck i can't like i, I was 15 so i couldn't drive right I was yeah like, how am I going to get there? And I'm like, I can't get there. Cause I lived in North Scottsdale. So it was like 45 minutes. And I was like, just remember just sitting in school, just like melting. Cause I knew like every one of my childhood heroes They're there like right at, now. The, at my spot that I rode, you know? like, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I mean racetrack and you meet all those dudes. And then I got to see the dirt jumping side. And then I, you know, like started riding with those guys and I was like the little kid of that crew, you know, like yeah. they're all like in their mid twenties or low, you know, at least, you know, old enough to drink or I don't know. Yeah. But so there, those became like my heroes, right? Like, and I'm like, dude, I'm riding with these dudes that are like incredible bike riders. Yeah. And, and, and when you're that age, yeah. people that are even just like five years older than you are like, oh, oh you my think they're God. Soul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was the same too, is it's like, you know, like they are always having fun, like doing whatever, you know, I just wanted to do all of that. I was like, they really opened my eyes to like what bike riding was outside. Because racing is like, racing is really, I think racing is great. I think I still tell like parent like Humphreys back to Humphreys mm -hmm. his kid races and I was like racing's the best thing for your kid to do as a bike rider like he's Agreed. gonna learn so much bike control and he's not gonna be like afraid of speed he's gonna be comfortable jumping like yep. and now he's a ripping bike rider like, sick it's I'm like oh, I love the story that. checks out but yeah it's just cool to see all that and then it kind of just progressed into that like that's how I met sure is because he was UHL at that time like, sick. he was also like a you say it like it's a club, UHL. You I mean, know? trail trail clicks kind of work clubs, you know. Like That's you, what's up. You, you put the you oh, put are you your trail UHL? spot on your bike, yeah. Yeah. Like, Did you have gang signs? Like, <laughs> no, no gang signs. I mean, UHL, I, bro. They might have had gang signs. I mean, Gons was UHL too. Yeah, no shit. They had a wall ride on the way in. Hell yeah! What was um? <laughs> what was one of the like your first dirt jumping trick that you learned? I mean, I, I imagine you goof <laughs> around with tricks as take you a, race and take shit. Take a guess, Bobby. Um, X up. <laughs> no uh turn down yes yeah sick i learned turn downs actually right down the street from here no kidding we had we had two jumps in a field that were on 32nd in indian school no shit like, you yeah know that dairy queen that's right there yeah or right next to that dairy queen i go there every day protein house dude yeah. delicious food. i learned turn downs in that field that's now a, i think it's a parking lot <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame dude it was 13 i think that's wild yeah. um so then, I I mean, you, you meet Sure, you're hanging out with the, the clique? Yeah, I met Sure, riding with those dudes. And, you know, we had, my friend Dom and I had our own set of trails in North Scottsdale. And, you know, once everyone kind of figured out that we had trails, like, I built trails like I was seeing in the videos, right? Like, we watched 1201, and we watched Anthem, and we watched all these old trail, like, push tweakers. And I literally was obsessed with all the push dudes. Like, I, you know, I wore out Anthem I wore out stoppers part like I studied it you know nice. like this is the that he was my god you know him what Boone did you Jab, like about him just looked good on a bike you know like he did the best tape like he would snap tape like three times like, sick did good x ups like cranked as you could get everything yeah. he did was like you know proper proper yeah totally yeah. he just he's just one of those dudes too that like you look at a bike rider and you're like that dude is good yeah you know that was that was the first time i remember like seeing that in a person dope um but yeah then just you know sure ended up moving to the east coast when we were like fuck, i think i was like 15 because i don't think i was driving Damn, yet. young buck 16 dude. maybe um are then, you and sure the same age no he's a little three older years older than okay me. Yeah, i think he's 43 44 maybe so Put that, put Sorry, that mic towards your face. Uh, yeah, he moved to the East Coast. He met Dave Young. That's how he got on Kink. Sick. And then when he got on Kink, he basically got me on Kink. And I was. He just I'd, brought you along? Yeah, I just turned 18, I think, 17. We were doing those contests out at Fort McDowell. Yeah, I remember hearing yeah. about those. Never got to go to one. Crazy. But those are the best. I want to know about them. What was it like? I mean, pick pick one year that you went and tell <laughs> tell me, paint me a picture you of what can. it was like. To I go mean, to... the, the 
the year that started it all was Wilkerson did a burning bike festival, the two hip contest out there. Okay. And so sick. like all the big name dudes came out, you know, like Behringer front flipped a jump out there. And wow. Corey Edelman tried to do bar spin. No Behringer Lander. front flipped a jump and what oh, year is 96 this? Like six or something. Fuck yeah. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's what, do you think that was a world's first? I don't know. Because front flips are rare. I they're mean, rare. even now, they're not that many people yeah. doing them. That's awesome. He did them so different, too. He would just like just throw his body forward Yeet. off the lip. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that was a big deal, right? And like Ruben was out there. He had just came over wow. from, from Spain, and he was like trick Ruben, you know? Like he was no doing shit. double whips. And there's that famous photo of Volker like roasting a hip that's in the street course part of it. Like, yeah. That, that was like the first big contest that i went to like seeing those dudes and on top of that it was like a huge party you know it was a yeah two hip contest you like, get to see they were the parties. bmx like you get to culture. see that side of yeah. it right like you know i'd seen like some other people would come out because like that's an m dudes would come out like butler would come out and marvin would come out and those dudes but like just having like all levels of that level of bike riding at that place was pretty crazy and then they would do the contest every year after that it wasn't a two hip contest but the fort mcdowell Indian reservation kind of lumped it into their powwow fair ceremonies that they would do. Like they'd have a big festival almost. And they just they kept have, the BMX thing going. And they would just kept, they literally just, it was like they would do a powwow and native ceremony stuff. They would have like crazy black metal bands. It would be this, there would be a rodeo. And then there would be like this giant fair happening. And then Damn. just like in the corner, there was a BMX contest <laughs> what are, with a like, bunch of white kids. Wild, <laughs> you know, random like, shit. Black yeah. metal. And yeah, it was, so, it was so crazy. That's You'd have amazing. Like, you know, drunk people like trying to give you 10 bucks to eat shit. And, like, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was pretty close to my house. So every year we would just build, we'd either build the skate park and then build the trails okay. for the contest. And it was pretty crazy now looking back on it because like not until the later years, the early years, like we would do all this work and build the jumps and build the skate park literally to ride it for the contest and never get to go back out there because it was on the res. Like, so we couldn't like, not like we can't just go out there and ride that shit. Like I didn't. Oh yeah. Mm, really? <laughs> yeah. You can't? No. <laughs> Why? Because it's not, it's the it's most not, it's private like different... of land. Okay, yeah, it's a yeah. sovereign nation. Like if you go out there and they catch you out there, they can literally like, they could take your car if they want. You oh, know? shit. Like, it's, it's a whole different set of rules. It's like trespassing into a different country. Yeah. Wow. So they basically like, you know, they're like, no, we, you had the contest. Like, we let you have the contest. Like, we'll see you next year. I'm like, <laughs> okay, bye. Shit, that's a lot of work. But later later on, we ended up getting like a key and we could go out there and ride. Sick. And like, so when we did like, when Road Fools 11 came out, like we had the key. So that's why we got to go ride there. Nice. Then. And like, it became more of like a spot, you know, like. Yeah. But at the early years, we're like, I don't care that you did all this work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, whitey. And looking back, I'm like, I mean, I get it. Like, yeah, I, I completely understand. Uh, and then, so, I mean, sure brings you on kink. Yeah, in your sure. Kink. Eight. You're 18? 18. I won the Fort McDowell contest that year. It's my only nice. uh, pro bike riding victory. I just graduated high school and I won like, I think I won like 1500 bucks at that contest. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, crazy, 18, dude, right? Yeah. So I was like, I went to Mexico the next day, like blew a bunch of money, <laughs> <Hell yeah. laughs> you know, like, but I was like, at that moment, I was like, this is it. Like, I'm, what I'm, I'm making money. Like, <laughs> little I know, it's going to be the most, big time. most money I'd ever make from bike riding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was cool. And then. Do you, you know, remember uh, you know, you're winning? Was it a, was it a dirt jump victory or a park? So or I was won, it mixed and shit? I won the dirt contest and I got third in the street contest which was just a ramp contest which is basically it's interesting just, how they used to call that street yeah, yeah. me just do it. it was basically just a box jump hip and spine yeah so there's I was nothing street just a about different it. Yeah. side of trails that was made out of wood yeah um yeah and i got third in that and so then i won like the overall ah, champion okay, or sick. something and for whatever reason that year there was more money i think like the, the tribe put up more money that year or something so like it was a bigger year anyways just do you oh, remember man. your winning dirt jumping run? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could guess. Did you take like a guess? X up, X up, uh, turn down. down <laughs> um, probably no footy can. Uh, yeah, I mean, I <laughs> nothing insane. That's for sure. 
I uh, I enjoyed watching all of your not all of them, but I watched you know Safety First. I watched uh, there was a mix with you and Sure and one other person in the Pacific Northwest. Oh Mills, yeah, the Vault what, that video? was just blanking on his. Uh, <laughs> if, what what was the video's Vault Vault yeah, Vault Aaron Aaron Nardi Aaron Nardi, dude, I'm learning a lot of names. I'm gonna <laughs> restudy this episode. Uh, I I guess when did filming become a part of it? Like, cause I imagine. You're on when you get on Kink. What are your you know responsibilities? Kink flow in 1998 or is is that the know. right year? Yeah, no, that was, 2000. No, it was probably 2000. Okay, yeah, because I'm yeah, I was born in 82, 18. Yep, the internet 2000. barely exists. Check. Uh, yeah, I was downloading songs off Napster. <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know what res- responsibilities that I really had other than the like just wear the Rock stuff. Rock shit, and, yeah. Like, I I mean, I even wrote an S&M with kink stickers on it for nice. a while. I think know? a lot of people still do that yeah, shit. Yeah, I wrote a, I wrote a Challenger that I put kink stickers on it because at the time, this was, you know, pre-Freebird. You know, there was the Revision B. Like, that thing was 40 pounds, and I was, I was literally riding a race bike, yeah. you know? So I was like, I can't ride this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's cool. Like, I mean, and then from there, like, it, photographers you know i met baker right around that same time adam baker yep adam baker and he had you know the craziest set of trails that i'd ever seen in prescott yep so we started going up there like i started going up there like three times a week those things were huge yeah and you know became friends with him and obviously he became you know the man like literally the one of the best bike riders that's ever existed for real and you know photographers started coming out like adam booth from bmx plus came out that was my first photo in a magazine was just Sick. riding with adam at his trails you know Sick. like and what was the photo it was an x up hell yeah <laughs> it was he, was it all the way around like yeah, you do it was, it was shot from like underneath and i remember being stoked because i had just gotten like a new i was i was always like pretty into shoes which is funny but i had like just gotten a brand new pair of like etnies czars which were like super cool at the time and they were like huge in the photo you know? hell yeah yeah shoes look sick You're like the photo's dope but my shoes <laughs> yeah, look amazing shoes look sick, you know? <laughs> what are those but it didn't say my name in or anything it was like this weird little sliver photo that was like you know an eighth of the page but i was like dude that's me fuck like, yeah that's huge back yeah then. it was cool and then you know you met him and i'd go on trips with baker or you know arizona at that time was already kind of a a scene in its own right you know yeah. because of Gons this is Gons Rat Boy Rat era. Boy yeah. and all that stuff and it, and Bells. It, yeah it became like a, a spot and a scene in its own right like Road Fools kind of put it on the map in that aspect too like, yeah what was your uh, first like kink official trip because like we all do the you know the young homie trip so yeah. you and you and Baker travel into yeah whatever but just went to weird contests was what was your first memory of like being I remember I on was a team trip yeah I remember I was like finals week because I was in college and this is the weird thing. Is I what did you study in college real quick, by the way? Um, I have a degree. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree with an emphasis in drawing. Cool. So he could draw good. I could draw good. <laughs> um, yeah. So I remember it was like finals week. It was like my first year of college, you know. So I was like 18 and went to New York. And I don't remember where we went, though. Like, I remember flying to Rochester and meeting Zach. And I had to borrow Zach's laptop because he had a laptop, which was crazy at the time like i'm like you have a computer that i can just bring with us you know and he's like yeah and i was like cool i need to write a paper on this trip nice so everybody else is in the van like partying doing whatever and i'm in the i'm like the little kid on the trip i'm not a little kid dirty dan was on that trip so he was actually the little kid (laughs) but i was like you know i was a young dude i couldn't drink or anything so i'm just like riding in the van with the owner of the company like doing homework just writing you know? about like, what do you do for a final for a fine arts degree with an emphasis well, in drawing? Was, you know you know you're under Are you study stuff is still like english and you oh, still okay just like regular shit, topic yeah. Shit. yeah i was gonna say like I, i'm just picturing you writing about like well a, a curved line <laughs> can mean, emphasize you, I do a bunch of art history shit that sucks that's so. kind of dope though i don't know but yeah it was it was cool but i remember like just being like you know i can't not do the school thing i'm like i have to ride but it was definitely like i should have seen it as a thing and then like to pick a side you know like yeah you can't half-ass can't ha- and i feel i fully feel like i half ass both things like it took me fucking eight years to get this four-year degree because i would go on trips and yeah miss shit and then i get dropped and whatever and then at the same time like i would say no to trips because of school yeah dude. and i couldn't put like a hundred percent you know 
of my time and energy into bike riding like I probably should have at the time. Yeah. But at the same point, like I'm not the personality type that can only do one thing. So like if I wasn't going to school and riding bikes, I would have been doing something else and riding bikes. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. like or, you know, I always would have rode bikes even going to school. So I might as well have done it like I did it. But yeah. it is it is interesting to like think back on like, yeah, maybe I should have just said yes to every trip and right, waited yeah. on school. That's what I was just about to ask. So like given life's great you love where you ended up <laughs> yeah. but if you could go back in time in a hypothetical different universe what would you tell that 20 year old uh casey to do yeah say yes to everything say yes to all the bmx <laughs> opportunities i yeah? still i still say that to like you know i my wife's a perfect example like right now she literally got invited to go to mexico for a week for a fishing trip fuck yeah and she's currently in new orleans like at a fishing tournament and then she goes to miami so she would have to change her flight from Miami to Portland to Miami to Cancun. And she's just like, that's just a lot. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, but you're going to Mexico. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, just say, yeah. Figure that's it out so later. rad. Your wife's a killer fisher, yeah. fisher, angler. <laughs> angler. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, say yes to everything. Like, that's good not? advice. Like, there's so much, you learn so much more by traveling with your homies than you do. Yeah. Some school, of the smartest people like, I know don't have degrees, yeah. but. You know, there's a benefit to having that piece oh, of paper sure. that says, hey, I can finish a project. Basically, that's what it is. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I can be held accountable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I I don't know, you know, the value of a degree. What's that cliche that we almost just said? The half-ass, you can't, you can't half-ass two things. You have to whole-ass one thing. What, do you know what I'm saying? What's I mean, that a, sounds cool. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> whole-ass. <laughs> you got to whole-ass one thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Should have um, taken that advice. Were videos a big part? Did you get to go on a Road Fools? I uh, didn't go on a Road Fools. I mean, they did those few Road Fools that were in Arizona. The majority of the video, like Road Fools 11, was basically here. Yeah. You know, like, and so we were with them all day, every day. Like That's dope. Billy and I. Um, Billy, who would have like Burnett's who runs the Mag Wheel? Yep. Spin, Sick. Spin Mag Billy. Yeah. Still one of my best friends nice um i mean videos were funny like wasted days was the first video i remember like filming for and it wasn't like it was just like hey we're gonna film a video like do you have a camera and i was like no <laughs> like do you know anybody with a camera I'm like no no i'm like <laughs> fuck i'm like i think i asked for like a handy cam for christmas or something you know like yeah. so my mom got me some little shitty handy cam and that's what we literally filmed wasted days part with like billy would hold the camera or i'd put it on a tripod and push record and go do a run like Fuck yeah <laughs> and, and you know i was thinking about like how different video parts are now versus then like and maybe it was just my mindset like to me a video part was like what you can do right like yeah it wasn't like i feel like now there's a there's a video part writer that like will do a trick that they necessarily can't do does that make sense like, yeah if you try something a hundred times you'll do it right yeah i hope or you'll die that's a video part you know yeah, and that's a video part that, right yeah. like you put in a video part whereas like to me my mindset on a video part was like this is what i do every day so i do just documentary days, type, you know? yeah exactly type like, yeah film video part you got your deadlines in three weeks cool i'll go ride the trails for you know a couple days you yeah know? like and that's and that sounds bad but like that's what it that's what it was it doesn't sound bad time, yeah you know? like it is what it is and that and that kind of progressed and then we did you know i think safety first was after the, nope cheap thrills is after that okay cheap thrills was like the first one where like you know video parts at least to my recollection like became more of a thing right like crazy videos were coming out like bike riding was like progressing super hard like even on the kink side it was like we're gonna put like an emphasis into this like we're gonna like go on trips and film stuff Sick. And, you know like what, we're gonna do it what uh this video first one you said was wasted days and yeah. then this is cheap thrills cheap thrills what year ish was this cheap thrills was i think i was like 2001 so, no 2003 nice so this is party time for casey fucking party time yeah <laughs> yeah i was pretty party in there cheap thrills was tough like i remember that was the first time i like felt pressure to film a video part and i ended up getting hurt pretty bad like starting to film it basically 
that's when I broke my leg and it was backwards. Oh like, shit! In the video like yeah, you were so on that, scarred. Yeah, <laughs> I was on scarred. I just remembered you on scarred. <laughs> yeah, but that video like that was like you did it on a a wooden spine. Yeah, outside of Austin. At okay, Ram yeah. Ranch. But that that trip was like one of the first trips where like Billy, Eric, Fantine, and I drove to Austin to ride all that stuff, and I broke my leg in Austin, and I literally couldn't ride my bike for eight months. Damn. And so by the time I started riding again, it was like you know, due date. Yeah. Yeah. Done. That sucks. Which is fine. So how did like it the end up? Part Your ended part ended up okay. I think I don't know. Okay. I mean, yeah. It's the same as I mean it was it's how I rode. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> this is a documentary of my writing. Yeah, totally. Look at the tricks I can do. And I was, you know, manual to 180 to nowhere. Yeah, love them. <laughs> There's a like strong period of time where that was perfectly acceptable because yeah. that was kind of a new new trick, yeah. manual 180s. And that's what broke my leg. <laughs> the manual one that you yeah. did 360 Three, to manual 180 yeah, on the spine. To yeah, spine. dude, it's all coming back to me. I remember yep. seeing that clip on Scarred, and then there's another crash clip that is like like very memorable that is uh by thunderbird skate park mm, um mm-hmm. there's a brick curved wall that's just like a sign and um yeah that one's ballman's fault what did ballman do ballman took too long <laughs> to film this fucking trick he was trying <laughs> <laughs> and i was too add to sit there and let him finish it so i just kept riding the fucking curved wall ride and put my front wheel over it and yeah that didn't go well dude out. did you i i I remember hearing this story a long time ago from Chadwick, but will you tell me that story? The, <laughs> the smashing your face into that curved wall? Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just a banked curve wall ride, and I was just, you know, I had already filmed, like, curve wall ride and then lip slide, and I don't even remember what Ballman was trying. I'm surprised. You I had, on that, that same spot. On that same already, spot, okay. yeah. yeah. And so I just kept riding it, like, dicking around, basically, yeah. and then I went fast, put my front wheel over it, you I sure did. You were hauling ass. Didn't at get it. my hands like, out. Hit my face on it. I remember waking up like there's a quick trip across the street, and yep. I woke up in the bathroom. You know, like my face is just gushing blood, Oof. and like it's what is that like 79th Avenue or something? Like it's a pretty busy yeah. street, you know. And I walked definitely I just, main road. I just zombied across the street, and Chadwick was like, "Dude, you just walked across traffic, basically. Like you didn't <laughs> stop." And I'm like, "Yeah, I was out cold." <laughs> I was blacked out. You dude. guys just let me do this, and then, <laughs> like you know, he'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> just then, walk like, it off. The sound. I've had enough concussions, even to this point. Like I've had concussions where, like, you knock yourself out and you forget a like a, a bunch of yeah. time period. And like I remember at that point, like I kept asking the same question, like, "What did yep. I do? Like, where am I? Like, whatever." And they're like, "Oh here? my god, shut the fuck up, dude! Like, <laughs> you were doing this and." I had just started dating this girl, which is, this is the funny part of the story is that like, I just started dating this girl, super like hyped on her. Yeah. She called me and I had no clue who it was. Damn. You know? like, Cause it was so new that like, damn, like it had been a couple weeks basically, you know? And she calls and I'm like, I fucking recognize the name. And I'm like talking to her and I'm like, it's gonna sound crazy, but like, I don't know who you are. And she's <laughs> like, you know, obviously like you tell any girl that you're dating, you yeah. don't know who they are. She's like, fuck you. What like, the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Like, super <laughs> mad. And I'm like, no, 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 this sounds crazy. Like, I'm like, if I see you, it'll, it'll hopefully help me, you know? And I'm like, so meet me in my house, like, and I'll get there. I'm like, I explained to her like what happened. She's like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, I mean, clearly not I'm alive. <laughs> I don't but remember I don't you. <laughs> remember you. But you know, and like, she ended up like showing up and by then I like my brain started reconnecting the dots and I remembered who she was at the time. But as soon as she saw me, like literally like half of my face was like scraped off and yeah. like, swelled up. And she's like, oh, my God, I, I understand. You <laughs> literally don't yeah. remember me. That's wild. But yeah, that's absolutely wild. So we just like jumped ahead some years. But um, I, I'm i curious because like I think my first introduction to you, aside from the session at Goodyear, was going to the. I got work premiere in uh, the garage at Core Bikes on Scottsdale Road. and Oh, wow. That was 2009 or 2010, I think. And that makes me wonder how long or when did you meet Chadwick, the the, the <laughs> lovely Ryan Chadwick? The... Chadwick origin story. Um, the second so best filmer in Arizona. Yeah, we <laughs> grew up in like the same area of town. And yeah. I'm the same age as Ryan's brother, Justin. And so I knew Justin, who was like, he was always into cars. Like he had a crazy, he was in car clubs and had crazy low riders and stuff. And I knew Justin, but he's like, I remember Justin said something to me. He's like, yeah, my, my little brother just started reading, riding BMX bikes. And I was like, cool. <laughs> you know, cause Ryan's like five years younger than me. 
So I never saw them around, yeah. you know, like, and then he had this little maroon Astro van with BMX stickers all over it. And he, st and I started like seeing him driving to spots and stuff. And I was like, I wonder who that is. And then I ended up meeting all of them at like Paradise Valley skate park or something. Nice. You know, and then. So you're even a generation like above Chadwick. Chadwick yeah. looked up to you when. Uh, I mean, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I would imagine so. He'd probably say <laughs> say so. But yeah. And then so that friendship, like they ended up going on a trip to Vegas with us, like Billy and I. And then it was like Nick Shest and Sam. Sam Burroughs. Yep. Sam yeah. Burroughs. Uh, best man at my wedding. Best man. <laughs> best man period. Best Sam. man period. Sam. Yeah. Uh, Hell of a guy. So that whole crew, and then Ballman was kind of in that crew, yeah. you know, as well. And we all went to Vegas, and I called them the Goof Troop because they were literally just goofy kids, you know. Yeah. Like I was, I was the old, I, you know, at the time. I guess I'm still the old guy in that group. I haven't stopped aging. <laughs> but I was like 22, and they were like 17, you yeah. know. So I'm like, they're the little kids, and I was like, they were like my little brothers on the trip, you know. I'm like, this is how you, this is what you do. You go to Hard Rock, you go to the Circle Bar. You buy beer across the street. You bring it into the bar. You know, like, yes. this is how you do Vegas, boys. <laughs> like, Sick. welcome to being a BMX. <laughs> but yeah, I like, got him into the random bars that I knew would let whoever in. And is this just like, a random Vegas trip or was this yeah, no, bike in North a, Cup? No, it's just a random Vegas Word. trip. Okay. I think we went and rode Skate Street and Dope. rode the parks. And yeah, yeah, it was cool. But it was that was the first time I remember, like, hanging out with all of them. Yeah. You know, like, the I Got Work Squad. Yeah, the I Got Work Squad. And then I ended up, like... Later down, like we became really good friends, and I lived with Chadwick and Sam, and obviously, you know, like we're all like tight friends yeah, now. Yeah, because of the, those are the like crew. Our, our best best friends. On that crew note, do you consider are you ditch? No, I never got kicked in. I have never got kicked in either, but I tweeted my way in, dude. I you kept, tweeted your I, way in. I pestered the shit out of them, and I was just they were just like, <laughs> okay, you can fucking be ditch canoed. Just shut up. <laughs> Better oh. not let Frank know you can get kicked. <laughs> no, in. he knows. Dude. <laughs> He still owes me one. No, we were like, we had a Billy and a few of our other friends. We had a little, we had a crew called the Daggers. Yeah. We ran like a website called the Dagger Zone. Oh shit. So this makes sense. Ditch Dagger, Death yep. Race. Yep. Damn, everything's clicking. Yeah, dude. we did a, we. So your crew is the Daggers. Yeah. We were the Daggers <clears throat> solely because we, at the time, fixed gears were cool and we rode mm -hmm. fixed gears to the bar. Um, There was another crew called like, hot city destroyers and they wore like i don't know we just they're they were our friends but like you know we're shitty bmx kids you know like we're gonna make fun yeah. of everybody so we're like we need a tough name like <laughs> we were watching thrashing a lot at the time and we were the daggers and that's fire <laughs> then we that's when the death race started it was we did you know the fixed gear race slash party that was solely because billy found all these crazy spots and he's like we could do an alley cat race and it's gonna be insane it's, and it became so insane. So let's yeah. explain. So Ditch is a crew mm -hmm. of friends that originated in California in a literal ditch. And mm -hmm. then I don't even know the whole history and shit of it, but a lot like Bay Area, I think. Does that, uh, yeah, they're that like sound right? south of Bay, like Salinas. So then Frank moves out here from mm -hmm. there and just carries on the ditch. They all have like legit ditch tattoos and that was all their Twitter handles was ditch Frank, ditch this, ditch that. And I thought it was so cool. I didn't know about the daggers. So that's <laughs> an interesting crew name. And then I just hear about this like super gnarly famous race that all the hip people are talking about. Like it, it brought, it was like the subculture in Tempe, Arizona of like the dagger death race. What? I never got to go to one, dude. Oh, bummer. Tell me about a ditch dagger so death race. So the death race was an alley cat race. So if you're not familiar with alley cat racing, it's like a fixed gear race that, you know, came from bike messenger world. Okay. So you get a manifest, which is basically your stops. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt slash, yeah. you know, race. And, and it, you know, in a traditional sense, it's how well you know the city is how, oh. how you can win these things and That's how cool. fast you are, right? I didn't know that this type of race exists. That's they awesome. They still have alley cat race. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah they're cool. They're, it's like a cool subculture. Like that's what was cool about that world to me at the time was this stuff. So we were like, we can do this. Like we we're BMX kids. Do we know crazy spots? Yeah. You know, like, and we we literally did this to just fuck with kids that rode fixed gears. Like everything was to fuck with them. We built like a fucking bridge that went over the the creek at the wedge that had a giant roller in it that they couldn't get over without pedal striking so they would fall <laughs> in it we made like a 
bridge like traded that rode across the pool. Like we made one of those in our friend's pool. We filled the pool up with dry ice. We had wow. stops that like you had to shotgun a beer, take a shot of fucking tequila and then spin around and then go do something. Hell yes, like all, everything was to just literally just fuck with all of these people, right? What and was then, the obstacle in the tunnel? I remember there was something infamous yeah. inside of a so tunnel. So there's a tunnel that goes underneath the 202, like right in Tempe, and it kind of dead ends at the end, but you get back in there and it's super creepy. Like, yeah, it looks like someone's going to get murdered when you're in horror there. movie shit. Yeah. So we, we, the best year that we did it is Billy for some reason, I don't, maybe he did it for this race, but he got like hundreds of doll parts, like heads mm. and bodies. And he filled up this trunk and then he filled up the trunk with fake blood and we lit the back end with candles and we played the CD on loop of like crying babies and oh like my moms God, yelling. Dude. And like, then we put <laughs> fucking like a smoke machine in there in and it was like the le- far end of yeah, the, in the far end of the tunnel. And you can't see it because the tunnel turns a little bit. So it's like, fuck you can see the light when you're in it. And then you turn around the corner and you can't see anything. And it's pitch black. Yeah. And then you come around the corner and you just see this like altar murder scene basically. <laughs> yeah. And so we did that. And like, you, you know, at every stop you had to like get something you know so it was like grab a baby doll body part and bring yeah. it with you and we had like there's like a cemetery in tempe and you had to take a tombstone rubbing of one of the graves that said gone fishing and there was like wow. just funny little things yeah, like dude. that and like fuck i wish i and then had it ended up at like a giant this. party like we would go to we would figure out a bar that would like basically let us do it right or like at the time angel owned the clothing store so we did it at the clothing store a couple times like sick but it was like you know, it just became such a thing in Tempe that like not was only huge. was like there was there was more than a hundred people that would do the actual race every year. Right. It would take us weeks to fucking plan and set this thing up. Yeah. It became this like whole event basically that like you know and we then were the surrounding parties yeah, too. And we just we were BMX kids, so we'd like thrown jams and contests and we like knew how to do that stuff, but this was like to a different level. Like we got bands to play, like That's so dope, dude. We we the last one of the last years we did at the bar, like we were having a meeting, like a sit down meeting at the bar about like doing the event there. And they're like, Well, yeah, like how many people do you expect to show up? And I'm like, Three <laughs> hundred? And they're like, Well, how much beer do you need? And I was like, literally as much beer as you can get. And they're yes. like, What do you mean? Like, I'm gonna get like there's no way you'll run out of this beer. And I was like, we will bet <laughs> you know like like you don't understand how much bmx dudes can drink and then Did it end get a lot casting? of them together is that what you're saying when no, you say the it, bar it, it, the place was literally called the bar the bar it was on apache and like terrace was it the sh- maybe it's called maybe now, i'm tripping but, but it's really shitty dive bar yeah it's a shitty dive bar i think i for sure. might know what you're talking yeah, about but it had but... room for all of us and that's fire yeah the dj i love it how and... many years did you guys keep it going because it was a halloween event no yeah it was always around halloween we did it for seven seven years, years straight dude at least six because six. i remember dagger death race six 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 that's fucking awesome dude but yeah it was it was cool i mean i look back things. like we still joke about it. like we should do it again and like yeah none of our <laughs> lives are set up to like yeah for real. <laughs> do this free event we're basically. married and- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> i'd have to like come back into town for a month and We'll leave that to the youths. Yeah. They got to carry the torch. I bet there's some shit going on like that. Oh, there's there's still some, alley cats. Like, yeah, there's heavy pedal, which is in town, and yeah, and they, I know about they've them. done one. And state bike company that's in town kind of asked permission for them to do the death race again. So did heavy pedal. Did you grant them? Yeah, we permission? let them. I was like, I mean, please, someone should do it. Like, Who was the head honcho of this dagger death thing? You were you the no? It was, executive it was producer. It was I a group effort. Say, it was a group effort, but yeah. I would say honestly, most of it was Billy's idea. Nice. And then, like, me, Brandon, Frank, like, we would all do it. You yes. Know, like, Sick. And it became, like, a giant, it was, like, a giant art project slash, yeah, you know, it was, it was a lot. But luckily, there was 10 of us doing it, so. That's amazing. Yeah, it worked out. Pause real quick. I got to pee real yeah, bad. I got to pee, too. <laughs> Pause. Resume. Resuming. Hey, welcome back from our piss break. We actually have only... 30 more minutes because uh, there's a video contest going on at Spinelli's that Zach Beerley's putting on called the Phoenix Winter Classic. And uh, four crews made videos and I get to go be a judge and I'm bringing Casey with Cam- bringing Casey as my special guest. He'll be my uh, consultant for co- er, judging. <coughs> better, better see some trails <laughs> gonna, clips. Yeah, boys. I want to see some X-ups. <laughs> so 
in light of our time crunch, I, I want to talk about some things. First of all, oh. uh, we did talk about your kink early years, which is cool. I want to know, just give me one, because I remember, I know Ryan Schur had a real party phase, and I want to know, <laughs> just give me one Ryan Schur party story. Nothing that'll get him, tr- get him in trouble, but... He hates, he I worked this, for the guy. He hates this story, but wait, was this is a Portland years? But okay. Ryan's like the happiest person on the planet most of the time, and when he's drinking, he's like he's like a little kid. He's like running around, like whatever. Yes. We are partying with this girls that we knew from Portland, and we're at one of their houses, and I don't know what the fuck he thought he could do this for, but. They lived like above the subway, basically. And there was like a stair set that went up, like kind of like a porch kind of deal. And then her kitchen window sat right there. And we were leaving to go to the bar. And this is, keep in mind, this is Portland. So everything is pretty much wet always. And so instead of just going through the door, I think he decided that he was just going to jump out of the window down onto the patio. And so he jumped out of the window and he landed. His feet slipped out. And he like, and it like has... He fucked his back up. He couldn't ride for weeks, Damn. you know. And he it's his back is literally still fucked up and he's like it has to be from that. Shit. You know, like but it's <laughs> it's like the roller coaster of emotions, you know. Like Ryan was like ripping to like some dumb idea like and it was literally nothing. It was just like a freak accident that like it was like a 3 foot drop basically yeah. but he just landed and slid and he's like why did i do that yeah. you know like because <laughs> i was drunk and happy I was drunk and trying to jump out of a window i guess you know? that's a that's a good relatively tame yeah. sure story i love it i was a uh, so the other thing i love your signature parts being named the lost dutchman and i'm wondering if you can tell us what is the lost dutchman you know briefly but like how did what sparked your interest in it and what is it for people who don't know? Um, yeah, it's like a whole. I think this was like you know going to art school and knowing marketing a little bit like I did at the time um, yeah. comes all full circle. But you know I had a whole idea for what my signature bike would have been called. You know, like originally my idea was like something like I wanted to like rip off an old mongoose logo and call it Badger. You know, like. Uh, that that seems see that. like it yeah. would work, right? But when I got into it, I was like, I wanted to give Arizona love. You know, like I love Arizona. So the Superstition Mountains are, yeah. you know, not right next to where I grew up. I technically grew up on the McDowell's, but I spent a lot of time in Superstitions. Like we go on hikes, beautiful mountains, go fishing. Mate. and yeah, That's where it's, Four Peaks is, no? No, Superstitions is like just East Mesa. It's that yeah. big, crazy red mountain. But Four Peaks is that general direction? Yeah, okay. Four Peaks is, is, is a little bit north east of there okay. behind it Fuck so it. superstitions yep superstitions Carry but on. there is a ghost story that goes along with the superstitions that there is a bunch of gold within the mountains the first person that went to find it was dutch he found it he's the one that like wrote down in records that there was all of this gold like millions of dollars in gold basically but he didn't make it out of the mountains and then subsequently, everybody that went back to try to find it never made it out of the mountains. Whoa. So, you know, superstition. There's superstition behind going in there. Yeah. If you go to that zone, there's a lot of things called the Lost Dutchman because that story is from him. That, yeah. And basically, like, he is protecting the gold mine. He's like, ah. it's mine, so you're not getting out of here. That's dope. You know, so that was the nod to that. That's why my first bike was copper because Arizona so is known for copper mining. Yeah. So all of that was kind of encompassing into that. Like the graphics were like, you know, Western style. Yeah. Like, you know, the the head tube. And I drew all of the graphics. I was going to ask that. Did you draw all you know? that? Like, yeah. yeah, I drew the head tube badge. Like the cactus little dude on there was like a funny little clip art that I found that was pretty cool. Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, but all of that was all Arizona theme. You I know? love like, that. I would put the Last Dutchman art on this wall, dude. It's fire. Let's, let's send let's you get the you. font. I think it's just on like dafont.com or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but that was that was a trip. Like just even being like when they were like, "Do you want to have a frame?" I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> Crazy. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I still have the first one in my basement. Nice. Keep that shit. Yeah. I wonder if I can get my hands on a Lost Dutchman frame anywhere on the internet. Yeah, I'm the old man that's like wishing i kept all that old shit right. now it's all sentimental and then it's funny because i just stopped riding a dutchman because i i 
did this rabbit hole last year and i was like does anybody have one like i i want like i don't have one that i can ride you know yeah. like i'd like to ride one again and my old roommate jess was like you left one of your bikes when you moved like i have it you want me to just send it to you and I'm like, are you fucking serious yeah. hell yeah sent me that like in a, a brand new mexican blanket odyssey junior seat like Sick. crispy Damn. you know and i was like holy shit so i rode it for like a year and fuck yeah it started getting beat up so i was like i should probably retire this thing yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. I asked Frank, no, I asked a couple of people who know you to hit me with some questions. Oh god. Or at least <laughs> things to things to say. Um Did you ever have any legal trouble with your bars <laughs> at Kink? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, I have those the badger too. bars. Yeah, the badger bars. The first sticker of the badger bar was Bucky the Badger, the University of Wisconsin Badger. Yeah. And I flipped him, changed the color of his sweater, changed like a little bit of something in his face. Yeah. Like I I knew the ten percent rule, but it wasn't enough. Basically. What's the ten percent rule? I don't think it I was know something it. like you need to change. If you're going to like rip off a fucking company, mm -hmm. you need to change it by ten percent for it to be like. That's a small else. amount. That's yeah, that's it, it wasn't very yeah. much. And and don't quote me on the ten percent. It's I'm sure it's like ninety percent or something. But ten percent was in my head. You know, yeah. I was like, I don't need to change it that much. Like, it's fine. And I was like, it's a it's a you know recognizable thing. It's a badger. Like, how can you know the yeah. bars didn't even come out and we got a cease and desist. Like, no shit, wild. I have the sample gold badger bars with that sticker. The only sticker that I'm aware of, because I'm sure Zach had to stop pro burn them all, them, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I still have that stuff. But yeah. those bars were iconic, dude. I remember going into Gordy's when I was younger and just seeing the Badger bars. They stood out. I don't know the the gold, the gold shit is yeah. fire. And then the story behind the next sticker is pretty funny. Um, it is like obscure movie called It's All Gone, Pete Tong. You ever watch that movie? No. Oh. So the premise of the movie is basically like a an electronic DJ goes deaf and he like figures out how to play by the sound of his, you know, or like the, the, vibrations. the vibrations and yeah. stuff. But he's also got a raging cocaine habit. <laughs> and so when he would be like fiending for cocaine, this giant badger would come out and beat the shit out of him <laughs> and like literally like hit him with a shovel and like force feed cocaine into him. <laughs> so the badger bar sticker on the second version of the bars was the coke badger from Sick. it's all gone <laughs> pete tong and he's holding like a little because he's if you look at it, he's wearing like a pink dress like that's what he was wearing in the movie you know Sick, <laughs> like <laughs> fucking a that's awesome uh the, okay so do, 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 we got more uh sure said the first time that you rolled up to union hills you were riding an aluminum power light <laughs> with clipless pedals fact <laughs> and it might have been like 95 or 96 and that's pretty wild because like you've always been a mystery to me dude like i, I know you were like a gener two generation i don't know i'm 32 you're only eight years older but i got into it way later and it's it's cool to actually kind of hear your hear your story and what years like when you were riding trails in 95 96 i'm five years old and i'm in virginia like it's so it's so weird to think about uh, yeah, let's that's... see. And then Sher says, I have way too many after hour stories, but we're married adults now. <laughs> ha, ha. <laughs> True. Thanks. Sir. And, uh, and then he said, ask him about one of his worst injuries that happened on a dragon punch machine. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's a, you know, we lived in Tempe college town. There's a super college bar called the vine. Um, they, I think the vine is still kicking. Too. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Wednesday nights they did dollar. You call it. Yep. Um, we went to plenty of those. Fuck, yeah. Dude. So I would just get straight whiskey for a dollar. Yeah. And they had this video game that was the punching bag game. Yeah. That you would like punch the punching bag and it would tell you how hard you could punch basically, you know? And yeah. it was funny for me because I don't know why I figured the fucking game out and I could literally outscore anybody in the bar. Nice. So like fucking giant football ASU dudes would come in. I and got they would you, go bro. to punch it and I would step <laughs> up and just beat their score. Like, Fudger and I a few times almost got the shit kicked out of us because we <laughs> were hustling. We could hustle the dragon punch <laughs> game, you know? Yeah. But the story that Ryan, the injury that Ryan is talking about is that I, in a drunken stupor, was like, well, I'm going to cut out the fucking middleman. Instead of punching the bag, I'm just going to punch the sensor. And I fucking uppercutted the sensor and I broke my hand. 
and had Oof. to have fucking surgery and couldn't and ride for a while i had to like lie to my mom and tell her that i fucking like punched a curve wall ride basically yeah. <laughs> and it was a fucking mess but so you and sure both have had <laughs> non-bmx related injuries that kept you off the bike yeah. for a while yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean partying's awesome. a hell of a drug partying's a hell of a drug um let's see did they do Second time he broke his wrist was the first stop of our cross-country road trip in Flagstaff, where we're driving across the country and back to film, and you only made it two hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's just a story in itself, but yeah. hit me with it. Um, yeah, I mean, Ryan, Tex, uh, another San Diego dude at the time, and Travis Gardner were driving to Boston from Arizona, and they started in San Diego. We went and rode uh, Prescott, with Baker and he had just built like this little skate park, basically a church. And I like, I think all of my major injuries come from fucking street spines. Like I probably should have just never rode them, but yeah, I did. I don't even remember how I fell, but I broke my wrist on it that and sucks. it wasn't broken. Like <clears throat> gnarly. Like I could still like grab on to stuff, you know? And I was like, I don't know, maybe it's just sprained. And yeah. I didn't want to not go to fucking across country, you know? Right. So I was like, Let's just go to Albuquerque, you know, like just drive to Albuquerque. If I can ride tomorrow, we're cool. If not, I'll go to the doctor. You yeah. know, like I went to the doctor in Albuquerque and they're like, you need surgery. Like, oh, fuck. You fucking broke your scaphoid. <laughs> Damn. It's like, cool. <laughs> so then they had to turn around and drive me home. And Damn. then we were driving my car. So I was like, I'm not going to like kill your guys' trip. You could just take my car on yeah. the rest of the trip, you know, like, but. And then would you, so they came back, dropped you off, they and then came took back your and car. And they took the car and they yeah. went on the crazy road trip. And I just got to go have surgery and have FOMO for that time. That's period. the worst FOMO being hurt, like right before a trip, dude. Yeah, that sucked. Speaking of trips, um, so throughout your career, kink, you lifelong kinker, huh? No, uh, no changes in frame sponsors? Yeah, no, no. That's no, dope. No and then I know Odyssey. Yeah. And was the Mexican blanket one your signature product? um yeah it was like gemini's idea the seafoam and orange junior seat was was mine and yeah. i had a snakeskin one yeah the snakeskin one i remember that's fucking yeah. rad because that went with all the other shit that you had from yeah kink yep you're a very artistic uh artistic guy but the question i'm getting at is basically like what crew in a van that you've ever been with was the most fun i imagine sure has got to be in there and you know <laughs> dirty dan maybe but like do any trips pop in your head of being in a van with the best guys i mean and who are the best guys yeah i mean the 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 kink crew that i think that everybody thinks of when they think of kink nowadays yeah is is, is that crew to me like sexton yeah sexton yeah. daryl doyle tony hamlin Dude. aaron smith yes like you know oh my god it yeah. makes me feel good just yeah. thinking about those, those videos are, those like, are like my brothers you, know? you got like, to go to taiwan and yeah that's like when all kink like with jay row like Walter was usually the filmer on those trips and like, you know, Jay somehow convinced Zach that we needed to go on all these fucking crazy trips. So, so good. we went to Australia for three weeks and New Zealand for a couple weeks and Taiwan and they went to Eastern Europe and I was still in fucking school so I couldn't go to Eastern oh, Europe. fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> again. <laughs> it's goddamn uh, art degree. You know, <laughs> it's goddamn drawing degree. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, those are, those are the, you know, in, in trips of that length with that many people and in, in you know you get extreme highs and extreme lows you yeah. know like you see the best and worst of everybody but yeah those trips are literally like traveling with your best friends you know magical moments yeah magical moments and the stories that we fucking have from those trips are insane yes but let alone the videos are <laughs> insane man those those were iconic those were like yeah i think about how the much culture fucking partying that we did on those trips that how those videos even <laughs> got filmed is insane to me you know that's like, the best man when you're young you can just party and I, then still go out and do stuff the next day so. not no more man mm -hmm. i can't do that i drink two beers i'm hungover for two days yeah honestly like even when i was younger i couldn't keep up with like Lashawn and kyle and wong they could kyle would just pass out blackout drunk snoring in a sleeping bag and then wake up the next day and get clips like it's nobody's same with Lashawn. like yeah the first night i, I met kyle it. was at fucking hanford house with because <laughs> san diego yeah and ryan and fudger and they all lived in this house with Gary that had the mini ramp in the backyard, but they'd have the, they had the literal craziest New Year's Eve party I've ever been to. Like there was holes getting kicked in the wall 
to outside like bricks were getting <laughs> knocked out like fucking fireworks the backyard lit on fire but kyle did edward 40 hands and he taped his fucking 40s to his hands and he started clapping like a <laughs> no. fucking crazy person <laughs> like, did he shatter him this crazy? yeah he shattered oh him. my god fucking passed he's out a, a savage with, dude. like broken glass taped to his hands like, yep and then i'll get up and ride the next day yeah, absolutely get up wild. And kill it i'm sure he probably could have got up that night and killed it um yeah, uh, that dude. I just got to ride with him and his kid the other day, and his kid's a tough son of a cookie, dude. Imagine Whatever, that. like, um, <laughs> yeah, imagine that. It's in, it's in the genes. Uh, he so it's it's crimson and fuck. I'm drawing a blank on his on his son's name. Um, but his son is on is on a bike, a very small bike, and we went to that little colorful park I was talking about, and he didn't know that the up ramp. Oh, I saw didn't that. He go filmed down. it. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 it wasn't filmed. I just I mean, watched it and it, it seemed like it was in slow motion because like oh. he almost made it and then just went over the bars and smashed his Ooh. face and he's bleeding from his mouth and he's crying. And I got to watch Kyle be in dad mode and just console him and like give him options like, hey, we can go home or we can tough it out. It seems like you're all right. And then like 20 minutes goes by and the kid's up and ripping again. It's so beautiful. Dude, dude. little kids are so rad in that. Like, yeah, we have a, a friend and portland that his kid is five and he rides the jumps with us you know like he's a little tiny kid but he did he landed super flat on one jump and like fully hit his face on the crossbar like split his eyebrow he's bleeding everywhere yeah. you know and he looks at his dad and he's like i'm going <laughs> sean's like you can't see out of your eye like we're going to the hospital <laughs> like, yeah. and he's going. like no dad i'm gonna keep riding he didn't, like fully didn't understand why he couldn't ride anymore. that's amazing dude kids are tough yeah. and they're just like built of rubber all right are you do you even do you, you don't have a kid no no kids no plans no plans no, no kids uh let's talk about so you mentioned stoffer earlier i was gonna ask like who do you think is your biggest influence early on and uh Mm. Yeah, who was your favorite writer growing up? Yeah, that's that's the hard one because it's like I would I would love to say all those video the dudes I saw in videos right because those yeah. those are your you know as a kid you look up to them the most because they're untangible almost you yeah. know what and I'm you're saying? a kid like, everything kid, impressionable right? but like honestly the like the UHL dudes to me like Fatty Patty and Schmoove and Huber and Ryan and Vowell and those dudes to me were the most impressionable Sick. because I saw them and I got to interact with them but yeah but I did like you know like I said I wore out Stoppers video parts like I yeah. was obsessed with Punjab like obviously like Aiken and I are basically the same age and yeah we rode together a lot when we were younger too because he was also a racer nice he was way faster so than you knew me, Aiken before like, most people like, yeah, he like would come from to racing. nationals here. Sick, but yeah, like he, I, I mean, obviously, like everybody, like we all looked up to Mikey. Like yeah. even as a racer, he he, he had, had something the swag. different. Yeah, you know? like he was the fucking. I mean, he is the fucking man. Yep. Yeah, those do like, and then you know, meeting Baker. Baker was insane Adam to me because he could did. literally do any trick that he wanted, yep. which I couldn't understand. Like yeah. he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go do a double whip," and I'm like, "What?" Two? The song floating. <laughs> the floating yeah. is playing in my head while you're talking about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, and then he just decides he can do tricks both ways. And I'm like, you're insane. He is insane. I always laughed because I was like, I rode with Baker. I probably rode with Baker more than I've rode with anybody in my life. Maybe Billy, but I would still, Baker is probably still right ahead of Billy. Yeah. But like he does so many tricks and I do no tricks, <laughs> you know, like we go ride the trails and he do like, cause in Baker's the kind of dude that he would do every trick he knew at the trails every day. Huh. Like he would suicide double truck every day at the trails. Wow. He would three double whip when he knew him every day at the trails. Dialed. Like, that's why he's so good. You yeah. Know? Like, and I'm like, well, I fucking do the turn down. Do you, do you keep in touch with him? Yeah. What's yeah, he? Still talk. He's, does he still ride at all? Yeah. Yeah. Baker? He's still ripped. Sick. Yeah, he's living in, he's living in Denver and. Nice. Kind of working with Cody Landers doing, they do a thing called the Jump Doctors. Jump Doctors. Yeah, they build bike parks. Sick. So yeah, he's doing that. That's and, very cool. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. that reminds me of another question that I had to ask you. Um, there's some dirt park in Oregon that you're oh, okay. battling with the government for? <laughs> no, the government. Um, the President of the United States? <laughs> the President of the United States, no. <laughs> Portland bike, anything bike related is ran under a nonprofit called Northwest Trail Alliance. Okay. And it's basically just a bunch of bicycle activists that 
don't necessarily know anything about the world that we need them to know about to make things that are good to ride. Mm -hmm. They like they love bikes and and they love the community and they love so they're you know, fighting for like bike lanes in, in the they, streets and stuff. Well, no, they they're fighting know. for bike parks and they're fighting okay. for more trails to be ridden in the woods and they're and they're fighting for everything that we want them to fight for. But they don't have a skill set or a knowledge to know what they what needs to be done. Okay. Or what at, as to what level things need to be built to to like be attractive to people outside of the city to right, give yeah. kids that are living in the city some progression to go towards. Like we have a black jump line right now that is literally, you know, like I said, we ride with a five year old. Yeah, and he rides that jump line. Oh shit! And we have a six year old yeah. that is doing tricks. Like, in they have nowhere to progress towards, right? Hmm. But to this, to Northwest Trail Alliance and their board members, that that this is like the craziest jump line they've ever seen. You know, and I'm like, you got, you have no, like, yeah, you need to look outside of your little bubble. Yeah, and like you have a wealth of information within our community. You know, like. With Brian Barnhart's in town, and he's like an original caddy dude, and James is another original like east coast trail dude and like we have like this information of people that they should be like yeah and they kind of are but they're at the same point they're like kind of half ass in it you know like we're we're allowed right now to like help rebuild this section and we literally digging with rocks yikes you know i'm like fuck so and what they, i don't know they've spent a fucking boatload of money like mil literal millions of dollars on a bike park that is half rideable damn so it's 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 tough because there's a lot of politics involved and and obviously like I'm passionate about bike riding and and selfishly like I know that I have a very small window of like time that I can ride at the level that I can still currently ride at. Right. Plus like I have a vested interest in like my homies kids that are like I'm watching them like progress and then yeah. they get to a level and it's a hard stop because they don't have anything else that they can ride. You know, Portland is a lot like Phoenix and that it's growing so fast that like our trails got plowed and, and yeah. it's, you know, like, and, and and it's, we don't live in that world where like you should have to go break the law, so to speak, to build trails that For are real. Yeah. Like, we have cities that are spending millions of dollars on bike parks and places for everyone to do this stuff. Right. They just need guidance on how and what they need. And that's know? where you come in? Is that... That's kind Why of where I it up? come in. I mean, I'm just more or less like frustrated with the organization and, and the cards that we've been dealt and, and they're not in it. And maybe, and I'm probably going about this the wrong way because I'm like fully just throwing them under the bus and talking <laughs> shit to them. Um, but, but at the same point, like, I think they need to hear it. Like, and I don't know how it is everywhere, but Portland's a very passive aggressive city by nature. Like no one really like speaks the truth. Everyone's afraid to like step on toes. Yeah, they don't want to hurt people's feelings. They don't want to hurt people's feelings. And that's all great. Like, and, and they are to their credit, they are doing a great job of getting more trails done. But they just, they kind of have this like something is better than nothing mentality. And yeah, that's well, not, like, why don't you like what you have? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, well, you could have nothing. I'm like, no, I could go dig in the woods like I have my whole life. Like, yeah. I'm trying to help you do this for the community. And you're not have you like gone to the city council meetings or whatever yeah i go to their like, meetings i go to the city council meetings. Like, yeah it's that's it's, dope that you're involved i with don't that. know it's it Fighting. is and it, i don't know sometimes i feel like i'm more detrimental than i am helpful because i'm you know i am very blunt in what i'm telling them you gotta do you what know? you gotta but, do man i appreciate a good blunt person but we're we are playing the game and we're figuring it out like we're we're rebuilding this thing now like i'll go home and kind of help kind of finish this middle section that's like a bunch of green tabletops and <laughs> hopefully it's what do you mean so black better. i assume is just like the, so they the do highest things, level yeah, green is medium yeah, or they, green is beginner yeah bike parks kind of run on the same model that like ski resorts run on yeah right? like green is entry you know blue okay, is intermediate yeah, black here's is our bunny expert, hill and our have, double black yeah, diamond yeah exactly gotcha. double black diamond stuff and yeah it's it's interesting just how all of that stuff works. You know, obviously, you know, we get a lot of like, well, you don't understand how this works. Like it's an insurance thing. And I'm like, have you been to the fucking skate parks here? Like, yeah. this, don't tell me it's insurance thing. There's a 12 and a half foot deep Dude, bowl down yeah. the street. The like, skate parks are so nice. Yeah. Like this three foot tall dirt jump is fine. Yeah. 
I'm like, the way you guys are building them is dangerous, 100%. Mm-hmm. Like, you're building them incorrectly. But What can people do if they're listening that want to help or chip in or do something to help? Yeah, it's just, it's just like, you know, like, you know, in Phoenix is the same as you know, getting bikes and skate parks. It's yeah, just that's the a more, huge battle the for a while. The most vocal you can be, and, and you got to kind of go through the right outlets. Like, it is your city council members. It is showing up to those meetings. It's, you know, a lot of these places are running on, like, the surveys now. Like, I'm sure you'll see them on the internet. Like, someone will post a survey, like, hey, we're getting a skate park. Like, we need your input. Like, that input is is literally the voice of yeah. anything. So, like, if that survey comes out and it goes hey, what do you want to see? Like a bunch of flat rails or a bowl or a spine or dirt jumps or whatever. Like they take that into account. Yeah. Like they literally tally it up. Like, well, we had 700 votes for a flat rail and 300 votes for a dirt jump. So we're putting a flat rail in, yeah. you know, like, and that's, and that's literally, it's it. Yep. I that actually, is the voice. I got to go to one here at Union Hills a long time ago. At, and just to see like how kind of like bureaucratic and just, yeah. you know government it is yeah. to get something built i think it was part of uh wheels in motion the tayez's yep. uh non-profit shit anyway we got time crunch five yeah, minutes there. so uh <laughs> what is your proudest clip slash proudest accomplishment in your bmx career i don't think i have a proudest clip at all um proudest moment is just all the experiences that i got to have you know like selfishly like that to me i learned so much by going on all these trips like literally all of my best friends came from bike riding yeah just, just bmx is a entity i owe so much of my life to like that's that's what i get out of this and Same. that's i mean go back to the bike park stuff like that's that's what i want to like show in kids and everybody coming up is like you know like there's not you're not going to be rich from this sport you know but like you could literally have the best time of your life and meet the best people you'll ever meet and you can travel the world and you can have all these experiences because of this kid's toy basically yeah like facts that's that's what i got most out of this that's pretty good okay uh (laughs) if you had to pick one trip to relive what trip would it be new zealand new zealand yeah sick that fucking trip was fucked I've never been to New Zealand. I've been to Australia. I mean, but... New Zealand is like, as a bike rider for the things that I want to ride, it's yeah. like heaven. Oh, shit. It's they like do it. They're big, big skate jumpers parks, out there. Yeah. Crazy trails. Yeah. Like, it's in paradise. You know, like even now, like as a fishing thing, like I would go fishing, you know, like yeah. it's the most beautiful place I've ever been with the best things to ride and all the locals are the fucking best. That's you know, dope. like it's all like a bunch of fucking trail dudes. They send apes. it down yeah. under, dude. God, kill it. Um, I can't think of their names, but I see them on this, <laughs> I see them on Instagram, and they're going like three stories high on every single dirt jump. Yeah, All uh, the backbone dudes are sick. Backbone, shout out backbone. <laughs> um, so ch- ha- let's do a two two different Mount Rushmore shit. Mm. Mount Rushmore of trail riders from Casey Badger himself. <laughs> Aiken, Stoffer, Punjab, Baker. That's it. Fuck, I'm five. Oh, that's it? Yeah, it's four? four. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're done. There's a lot in here still, but yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going so people can look up trail riders. Foster, you know, BF. Mm-hmm. I mean, Nutter. I put Nutter on the list because nice. he's a fucking ape that no one even realizes how crazy good that dude is. Uh, Clint. Clint, yeah. Maddie. Like, those are the modern dudes that are, you know, the best. Dope. Okay, and then. And then you can keep going. Just all-time BMX riders, <laughs> Mount Rushmore. I mean, it's probably not much different. Yeah, I know. You love trails. Yeah. but Aiken, BF. Like, I feel like what BF continues to do, even yeah, as a dude. doctor, is insane. Longevity. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as a, on a bike riding entity as a whole, like, Edwin changed the game. Yeah. So I'll put Ed on the list for sure. Um people that i like watching ride still like the whole fast and loose crew like I'd yeah put dude they're Corey so sick. on that list all right boom there's sure. your mount rush one yeah, cool Corey walsh edwin <laughs> bf and aiken that's a that's fun, a pretty that's a fun list. one i love it okay and then tell me about some riders that i don't know about that i should know about um i mean fresh off the top of my head is rea if you don't know rea rea yeah no um he's ripe life on insta oh that sounds familiar yeah he's he's on snm he's like he's 
Xbox. Oh, I follow him already. Yeah. He's, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. he's like the literally he's like the best kid on the planet, Ooh. anyways, and yeah. he's incredible. At just record. one Instagram clip, he can I can. Oh, tell. he didn't ride anything, you know. Yeah. Like he's a fast racer. Well, he's, he's rocking a gyro and shit. That's dope. Yeah, Dude, he's got a two hip right. pork oh, that yeah. he built up that he literally rides like it's a modern bike. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> yeah. All right, Arya. Yeah. Anybody Arie, else? Um, just trying to think of like some north some local boys homies, yeah. that don't like Draven is. Fucking sick. Draven. Yeah. I don't even know. D R A V E N. Draven. He's super sick. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, really just ride with like, we have like a good crew of old dudes at home. Do you know that... Draven's last name? No. No. <laughs> well, Draven. Sorry, Draven. Hi, Draven. Sorry. We'll follow. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find you. <laughs> um, yeah. I and mean, then I just ride with the old dudes at home too, so. And their kids. Sick. The kids are sick. Yeah, kids are sick. <laughs> it, it's like inspiring seeing young kids on bikes because it reminds you of like, oh, yeah, I was that once. You know? Yeah, you know? totally. Like, everything's so fucking magical when you're young. Like, yeah. just bunny hopping. I remember yeah. my first bunny hop, I got my bike that high off the ground and I ran screaming inside to the house. Like, Dad, <laughs> yeah. you got to see It's so this. cool because, I mean, obviously I don't have kids, but like our friend's kids are so rad that I'm like, fuck, dude, kids are cool. Kids are like, cool, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> But just like watching them ride bikes and like seeing them like develop as bike riders and mm -hmm. seeing how it's like shaping their world is like pretty fucking cool to me. Like, and it's wild to see how fast because your brain is a sponge when you're oh, that yeah. young. So like you just learn shit. And yeah. It's amazing to watch. Like yeah. now that we're older, learning shit ain't, yeah. ain't going to happen. Yeah. It's cool. Like we went and rode these this set of trails in, in Washington last year. And they're not huge, but they're not small either. And our little homie Max, who's I think Max is 11. But he went with us, and Max. he rode every line at the trails, dude. And Hell like, yeah, Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, literally get more out of that probably than anything these days, you know? Yeah, like, just living yeah. or just watching the youth. Yeah. Um. Okay, last thing would be giving advice to young kids out there, young new BMX riders who are just getting into it and experiencing the BMX world. What's your advice generally for don't, them? Don't expect anything. Like, I think... Take, take bike riding for what it is. Like if you really love bike riding and you're going to ride bikes regardless, shit will happen if it's meant to happen. You yeah. know, like you don't need to whore yourself out. You don't need to be pushy on anybody for what your goals are, so to speak. Like, I don't know. And I think that's just a thing in general for me. I see kids like their whole goal is to be sponsored. And once they achieve that goal, then, you know, check, they're done. Yeah. You know, like. Dude, I That's hate to admit that that was kind of me. Kinda me dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I got sponsored when I was 18 and I basically stopped learning tricks. Nah, that's not true. I, I still learn I mean, some shit, but you. I like... a lot of, I mean, and that's just a personality thing. It's nothing against those kids. And you got to learn. Just... Well, I, I learned the hard way and then yeah. like you can overcome that. It's just don't... The lesson is like if you stop getting better, you're going to stop being good, you know, at a certain point. And especially if you're getting sponsored, you have to keep <laughs> on improving. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um... And... You know, <laughs> also just have fun. Don't expect stuff. That's yeah. great advice. Ride your bike. Uh, I think we can wrap it up. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to ask you, but I'm late to go judge this contest. So yeah, we're blowing it. Yeah, let's go. All right. <laughs> thank you, Casey. Bye. Thank you. Oh, see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Canode Knows brought to you by Dig BMX. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for all the messages. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for uh, just riding bikes and enjoying yourselves. Wow, that was corny. I'll see you next week. I don't know who's going to be on the show. We'll see.